Well, good morning. So we are, uh, uh, we're studying Solomon. We, yesterday we we're talking about how God has just filled his presence, had filled the temple. All right. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick up as Solomon ded- dedicates it today. But before we do, do you have your Bibles? All right. Do you have your pads and pens and you want to mark in it? Remember, you want to mark it in First Kings and Second Chronicles as you're following these things. All right. So. It shows God has accepted their, 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 their praise. He has, he has accepted uh, uh, the, the, the temple now, all right? Now it's time for Solomon to dedicate it. So we're going to pick up in 1 Kings chapter 8 now. And 14, 14 I'm not going to read it all. Please take the time to read it because we'd be doing this for six months if we took care of it all. But uh, 14 through 21, he recognizes the completion of the temple. He recognizes his father, David, that, that uh, the history, we should never forget our history. All right. And he talks about the history and the history up to this point from the time that God has uh, released him from Egypt right up through. And he's doing this. And then he dedicates it in prayer in verses 22 through 26. He recognizes the power of God. He thanks him for his promises uh, to Israel. He, he, he thanks him uh, for the promises he had given to his father. And, and he reminds him of the promises that he made to David. 26 through 30, Solomon recognizes God uh, cannot be placed in a temple. That God cannot fit in a little box. Boy, oh boy, does that sound familiar, doesn't it? So often we try to put our God in a box and use him when we need him instead of we should be doing whatever he needs us to do, all right? And so he's saying, I know you don't fit in here, but he pleads with them and requests that that all who enter in worship, that, that it would please God, that everybody that came in would please God with their worship and that he'd hear their prayers and that, that he would also forgive them of any transgressions they would have. Then he Asks him to do some other things. So now he's gone through all this. And then he says, Lord, condemn the wicked. Those are wicked. Those are against your laws. Condemn them. All right? And protect and destroy us from our enemies. Or if we are conquered, be faithful when we repent to you. Then he talks about when there's famine, when there's locusts, when there's lack of rain, that God's people would stay faithful. And when there's sickness and plagues, that they would be protected. Now, I want you to notice this in this prayer. This is something the Holy Spirit really revealed to me, all right? Solomon expected bad things to happen. He realized the reason things happen a lot of times is because of our own actions, And that's what he's referring to. He blames their unfaithfulness to have bad things happen. How different the attitude is, all right, versus what we do today. Today I hear people blame God when bad things happen, all right, for every bad thing, and they take no responsibility for themselves, all right? Uh, oh my goodness, you know, I, I wrecked my car on the way home and why would God let that deer go out in front of me? Well, where were you coming from? Well, the bar. I only had five or six drinks. All right? Or, or uh, uh, other things. We, we have our actions and then we have a result from those actions and we don't take responsibility. Solomon's prayer is saying, listen, I know because of our unfaithfulness, bad things will happen. I pray that when we repent, you bring us back to restoration. Amen? Amen. We, you know, Christians need to hear this. We start acting like the world. We blame everything on everything. All right? And uh, we need to take personal responsibility. So, then he prays for those foreign lands 
that they would see God's power. Those that come into their land, those that would attack them, would see his power and understand that he is the one and only true God. That he would be lifted up. He was basically saying that you may be glorified, Lord God. We want to glorify you. And then he blesses the assembly. And he encourages them to follow the law of the Lord. He says, listen, we want, to be, we want to be rewarded, but we have to follow the statutes of God. And finally, he dedicates a temple by offering sacrifices, all right, for all of Israel. Now, after all of this is done, we have no idea how long it took, all right? But after all was done, he gave a great feast. And guess who was invited? Everyone. Everyone was invited. It wasn't even invited. It was pretty much mandatory. It was expected, all right? And they eat and they celebrate. And then after eight days, he releases the people. He says, if you need to go back to your homes now, if you need to go back to your businesses now, it's okay to go back, all right? But the feast went on for two weeks, 14 days. Why do I find this important? I'll tell you why. It's amazing how so many people can't stick around in church for an hour. All right? Uh, that that it's, it's, it's too much time in their schedule. If the service is an hour and a half, oh, that's crazy. And don't even think about two hours. Here they take and they worship. Here they, they, they sacrifice And they feast and they encourage each other and they stay together for two weeks. In fact, it was, like I said, pretty much mandatory, expected for eight days. Basically what they said is, what do you have in your life that's more important than God? What do you have in your life that's more important than our Lord? Nothing. And that's what he's saying. So we pick up in 65, all right, of chapter 8, and it says this. This is in 2 Kings, of course. At that time, Solomon held a feast and all of Israel with him, a great assembly from the entrance of Hamath to the brook of Egypt. Before the Lord our God, seven days and seven more days, 14 days. On the eighth day, he sent the people away and they blessed the king and went to their tents joyful and glad of heart for all the good that the Lord had done for his servant David and for Israel, his people. Amen. That's the heart of worship. That's what we should be doing as believers. Amen. Father God, we thank you and we do worship you. We thank you so much for who you are. You deserve our worship, Lord God. You deserve our praise. You tell us to bring you our sacrifice of praise. Oh, Lord God, we, we, we repent for, for not praising you the way we should, not lifting up the way we should. Lord God, not spending time with each other the way we should when we know that your, your scripture tells us to do all those things. Thank you for your grace and your mercy and certainly for your love. I ask again that you would bless all that hear this. In Christ Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. And all God's people said, amen. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's Sunday. God bless.